Several years ago, I was developing a project in Python. That project involved heavy maths like uh, OpenCV and NumPy on weak processors like that in Raspberry Pi. So I constantly tried to optimize and speed up my code. Also, it was an embedded software and my boss did not want to expose uh, the code to every owner of his product. And I started to research options to optimize and uh, c compile the project code. Among other solutions, I found this one. After years of using it, I realized that it is not just a Python compiler, but the whole technology based on CPython, allowing us to make our code better and faster. People call it Pyrex or Cyton. Let's make it clear. Pyrex is a syntax uh, superset of Python programming language. Cyton, on the other hand, is automatic translation tool. So what can it be used for? Okay, just uh, can just compile your Python code. Even this uh, straightforward uh, thing can actually speed up your code and uh, make it harder to reverse engineer. Next, uh, it is easy to create compiled uh, CPython models uh, with uh, setup tools. In result, you'll get an uh, .so file usable by Python API. Uh, next, uh, you can bend your Python code to C, C++ libraries in a very straightforward way. Of course, uh, there are some additional syntax to learn. And finally, you can uh, use almost all C features in Python code, like static typing, pointer operations, etc. You must remember that Cyton and CPython are different things. Uh, Cyton is a translator tool that is subject for, for this presentation. CPython is the most well-known and widely used Python language implementation including its bytecode compiler and interpreter. CPython exposes an API, which is used by code generated by Cyton Translator. Let's see how it works. The main tool is Cyton Translator. It is available as a standalone binary and as a Python model. It's written in Python. Its purpose is to take the Python or Pyrex code along with augmentation files, and translate them to C code. Then the generated C code is compiled and linked with CPython and other libraries to get a native binary executable files. That is done by GCC. Ok, uh, let's do something practical. Let's begin with uh, just a pure Python file. Look at the frame on the top left. And uh, we'll try to compile it. It's pretty simple. At the bottom frame, you can see the compilation script. It can be easily done in Bash or GNU Make, but I decided to use Python just for versatility. At top right frame, we see the result. Almost 200 kilobytes of binary code, and it works. But we already know there is some C code in the middle. Let's take a look at it. Wow! The Python 4 statement is translated ugly enough. Infinite 4 C loop, a break statement, a lot of checks and branching. Is this still that bad? No, I don't think so. Since uh, Python objects can be of any type and size, the translator doesn't know what to do and tries to create the safest code. It's ok. Let's just add an augmentation file to this. One line with more precise function definition and magic! We now have integer local variables and the real C style for loop. Also the footprint is reduced by 60%. Amazing! Can we do even more? Yep, we can write our code in Pyrex. Here you can see 
something that looks like a slightly changed Python code. It's uh, no more compatible with Python, it's Pyrex now, uh, but likes very like Python, yep. Nothing complicated really. You can see we added a functional result type and a local variable type definition. C code is even better now. All the variables are of the same type and the real for loop is in place and the footprint was reduced again. Of course, we have some minimal code to keep it work. It's around uh, 90 kilobytes in Python 3.9 on 64-bit Intel platform. That's why we cannot get 10 kilobytes as if it was pure C. But that's not bad at all. Now let's talk about modulus and setup tools. I mentioned that Cytem is available as a Python model and can be integrated in setup tools script. Here's a demonstration how to do it. Unusual setup.py script in pure Python. Nothing really special. Just all the extensions assembled here are passed through Cytonize function. Another interesting feature demonstrated here is how we can create native Python objects with help of Pyrex and Cytom. We can define classes that are not descendants of standard object class with all of that overhead and present our own data types. Cytom offers us spatial methods to integrate these classes in C Python API directly. So I think uh, you are tired of code, so I promised this slide totally covered by letters and numbers will be the last of a kind in this presentation. Just for fun, to provide a simple example, I took standard uh, POSIX socket library and pulled something from it into Python Realm. You can easily get C defined constants from library headers. Data structures uh, need some more attention. If you plan to use uh, these structures in your code, you need to describe the fields you are using. If you pass them as is through code, you can just pass. <laughs> Functions also need to be described in Pyrex style, but in most cases you just copy and paste from .h files. Even semicolons do not confuse Pyrex. Let's summarize. To optimize and speed up your Python code, you can use Pyrex and Cyton at different levels of emotion. First, you can just compile your Python code. It may be not very efficient, but if you need it, you'll get your binaries. Second, you can augment your Python code and get some performance bonus while keeping it pure Python. For example, for debug purposes. Third, you can go deeper and refactor your code to Pyrex. Syntax is not completely different. Also, you can use your Python models and libraries even if they are not compiled. The CPython API is designed so. And if you have knowledge how to use pointers and bytewise operations in C, you are welcome to use it in Pyrex. Then you can directly bin your code to C compatible libraries. And of course you can create compiled Python extensions. Now that's all for this presentation. The address for feedback and questions is on your screen. Thanks for watching. Bye.